Hello everyone and welcome to episode 23 of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. Today I'm delighted to be joined in conversation by the sensational Holly Mitchell, a transformative coach and equine guided educator based in Gloucestershire in the UK. My love of horses is certainly no secret, so I was delighted that in this week's inspiring episode I got to speak with Holly who shares her amazing journey and how her calling to be around horses only came to her later in life. We delve into the incredible wisdom that being in the presence of horses has brought into both of our lives. How sitting in a space with her herd, you slowly unwind and begin to hear the whispers of your own innate wisdom as well as that of nature and the interconnectedness of the world around you, stirring slowly and offering you the chance to learn to trust how you can be guided by your heart in challenging times towards what actually feels good, even if your logical mind might be trying to convince you that on paper it simply doesn't make sense. We also discuss some of the fascinating research from the Heart Math Institute studying the effects of heart coherence and how the resonance of being around horses in particular can be so beneficial to us. Through it all, we are reminded once again of the importance of community, both human and non-human, and how having hope is so important in how we show up and experience life and the experiences and impacts we can have. If you're looking for a new way of being and finding resilience, then equine guided work might just be the missing piece of your puzzle. Welcome, Holly, and thank you so much for joining us today on this episode of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. I'm quite excited to talk to you because we're going to be talking about horses, which is a huge passion of mine. Um, But I like to just start off with my guests and ask them to share a little bit about their nature story and just really quite open ended, but just how nature has been a part of your life and what nature means to you or if that's evolved over time. So if there's anything you'd like to share to start off about your how nature's yeah. important to you. Sure, sure. I thank you so much for having me. I'm really happy to be here. Um nature, uh nature definitely has evolved for me. Um I think just my awareness of what it means to me and for me. Um I grew up around nature just because my family uh lived out here in the countryside and oh beautiful i mean we 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 started we we lived in london but we also had the the country place but we ended up moving here when i was about nine years old and uh it's where my family remained full time so i spent most of my childhood in the countryside and i used to love going for walks and just kind of going off and doing my own thing I had some neighbor friends and we used to just climb bales of hay and do stuff like that, you know, just goofing around. And um, and then sort of later on, I uh, my dad introduced me to photography. He loved that. And so he taught me how to use a camera at like 14. I think we probably started. And I used to go walking with him on the farm in various different areas and stuff. And we used to take photographs of trees and landscapes and stuff like that and so I was just really naturally drawn to that environment um and for myself as an adult I always just have liked in my spare time going off and getting lost adventuring in the car and it's normally going off into some remote area down country lanes and all this kind of stuff um, but I think it's in sort of like my latter years that I really actually when I really seriously started to pick the camera back up, I started to notice how present I used to get, really present. Yeah. Um and it just was an amazing place to be in that state. Um and then through sort of like my journey of um spiritual teachings and learnings and stuff, um I've been able to put um sort of like a language to it 
yeah been able to see it from that perspective that's, that's one of the hardest things I think isn't it is um our language is quite ill-equipped for us to sort of delve and and share and explain like some of the experiences that we have because they're much more feeling rather than things that you can easily explain to yeah, people aren't they? yeah yeah, we, we're limited. We only have words to describe things, but um, often, often it's just it's it's what the words are pointing to. Yeah. Um, and it's the feeling behind what you're saying that can sort of express it, I suppose. That's why yeah. poetry is so good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Less <laughs> literal and more that leaves that space open, doesn't it, for yeah, interpretation? Yeah. 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 Oh, it, no, it sounds lovely. I, I find that with photography too. It does just it sort of focuses the mind doesn't it and quiets everything else and you just become very in the moment um yeah I used to so I started off I wanted to be an actor when I was a kid that was like my there was that was 100% what I wanted to be and it's what I pursued and so I went into the entertainment industry to pursue that and I also worked in various aspects of that um from production and theater and stuff but my mind would never get quiet because somehow the focus was on me and I hated that. You know, yeah. I wasn't one of those actors that wanted the light on me. I just loved the craft. Yeah. And it wasn't until I stepped away from that and then I kind of picked up the camera that I was like, oh, this is the feeling. Because yeah. I love being a fly on the wall, yeah. you know, and I love just observing and, and watching yeah I think um, I'm quite similar as well I love it's sort of a natural curiosity and just like just observing life and people and I think that's part of why I, I started the podcast as well was just the opportunity to to connect and speak to people and just yeah just soak up their their wisdom and knowledge and share it with others um, rather than being it being about me it was it's about other people and, and yeah, our connection yeah. in the world around us so yeah 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 definitely and um you've more recently moved into um working you, you've got your own little herd of horses haven't you and yes yeah you're just you're just moving into I what's it called wild healing hearts which I love I think it's a beautiful beautiful yeah. name yeah so I've, I've called I've called it that only because you know I'm just I love Part of what I love about horses is that free wild spirit that they kind of represent, yeah. even though we've domesticated them and there's a lot of um, uh, ways that we use them that isn't quite as free as they used to be. But there's still just this magnificent spirit in them that just kind of points towards that. And um, they're just very, you know, that word gentle giants, um, they, they just have this sort of beautiful softness about them yeah when you, when you actually get a chance to really get to know them yeah I know they, some people can find them quite you know intimidating, intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah I've got um I've got two of my own and and um my slightly younger one who's not that young anymore he's like I think he's like 16 now but I've had oh, him wow. since he was three but he is um over he's like 16 too and he's a a big um quarter horse cross American Basquiat Curly and he's a he's a oh, big wow. sort of roping horse type you know you could see him sort of wrestling <laughs> a cow quite happily and people find him very intimidating but he is just the biggest softest marshmallow <laughs> that you could ever come oh, across he sounds gorgeous <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they are they are I think I think people have I, I don't I mean that's part of what you tap into with the the healing side of it is their mm. ability to really read people and I think maybe sometimes that's what people find intimidating as well isn't it is this big being that kind of sees to their heart you know there's no you might be putting on like a happy smiley face but to a horse they're like if that's not congruent with all the way through they'll they know about yeah. it yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent, and 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 again, I don't think I really um, noticed that until I started noticing it. And, you know, that sounds crazy, but um, I was always drawn to horses. I mean, I love animals in general, um, but I was always drawn to to the animal himself. Um, but spending more time with them, which I have done, sort of probably over the last four to five years, they just kind of became more a part of my environment. Um, I've noticed how, you know, even with me, 
they'll read me if I'm if I'm coming in with an energy that is not congruent to them or myself like they don't want to know yeah they'll leave you in the dust they'll be yeah. like see you later yeah. <laughs> yeah turn up properly or don't turn yeah. up at all. Yeah. exactly exactly yeah. um but one of the most beautiful things is to have the opportunity and that's what the last um you know since we've had our um little family um they've given me an opportunity to just go and be present with them yeah and there's something really magical about just doing that yeah I think it's um a lot of people who have horses are get caught up in in doing things with their horses don't they and it you know it's quite a it's still relatively unusual um to find people like us who just sit and be with their horses Mm -hmm. um and it is completely it's a completely different experience isn't it when you just actually sort of go with no agenda and and just start you know sitting with them or or watching them or just sitting near them while they're just doing their thing it's a really yeah yeah, amazing experience it's amazing experience and I think they I think they respect you for that yeah. It's almost like, okay, you're, you get me. You're not here just to do something with me. You're here to appreciate what I'm about. And, and after a while, I think they just, it, it, it makes them feel safer yeah. as well. Like yeah. there's no demand from them. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it just it's, like, it's a conversation, isn't it? You've sort of opened a door to a different yeah. conversation where yeah. they're actually part of the conversation. Yeah. yeah. And and so most people that come, you know, from a, a, a long uh, horse background, um, you know, understandably, they come from training of their own kind where they go in and there is there's a job to be done, yeah. whether it's to do exercises with your horses, whether it's to train your horse to do dressage or eventing or something or even work a working horse on a farm there's a mission to be done yeah um and so you kind of skip out on that um I suppose luckily for what I I like to do and want to share with other people is I don't have any of that schooling you know so I I've never kind of come in with that approach but even some people that have come to spend time with me and they they come from more of the discipline approach they're like this is wonderful this is so nice to actually take time for myself yeah and sit down and be with them or just sit down and be quiet it's so lovely yeah yeah Yeah, it does it's it's a tonic to our our society I think isn't it that Mm -hmm. opportunity to be with these beings and just it gets you very present doesn't it just you know they're they're living in the moment and they sort of bring you into that with them yeah 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 so how did um how did you sort of get into it then if your your background hasn't been quite so much um with horses and and this what was there a moment or did you come across someone that sort of inspired you <laughs> yeah well a little bit a little bit it was sort of it sort of was an unraveling of of um it was an unraveling of life that I just kind of followed so I had just finished um a series of training in um an understanding of, of psychology of mind for okay. the three principles Okay. Um, it's something that I had come across and I really wanted to share what I had seen through this understanding. And so I went in for um, various different trainings and worked with some mentors that um, teach this and, and and you can get certified through it. So I had just finished doing a lot of that and I kind of wanted to step away and take a break and go and just be with life. Um, and I I went off and I did some horse riding lessons I was like kind of feel like doing something with my time and I googled and there was somebody close by who did western riding and that's that was like suited me fine I was like (laughs) that's what I want to do um and so I started riding with him but then I went off and I did some travel in a country called Cuba 
and I met my now today partner and he was a horseman oh wow (laughs) and so that's where the horses started coming in and I had I kind of approached them in as you know again in just being with rather than doing with um and from coming from my studies of of the principles which just basically points you back to being present you know what it is to be present what it is to be up in our minds and what it is to be in our bodies and present and I started to notice that there was a correlation here that I really liked and I felt with them and so that kind of opened up my sort of first vision to horse therapy and um, well later on in life you know about four years down the line my husband moved back to England with me oh, wow. and eventually we we went out and after after a while of being here we went out and um, we went to this auction in Wales somebody had told us about it they were like it's a bit hit and miss but you can go check it out so we went and we came to, we came back with two horses <laughs> <laughs> we went for one we came back with two and um so they were our first two and we had goals to to actually make a business um with the horses um my husband is a trainer and so he he was looking to potentially train and sell and we also wanted to open up to sort of western um hacking adventure tours here around the area so um we ended up going back about three months later uh, to, to get one more <laughs> and we came back with four <laughs> so it, it wasn't none of this was planned I, it, none of it was really sensible um but we did it and so now we have our six we got what I say is that we've got our four giants our four normal horses and then we've got two little midgets we've got two little Welsh mountain ponies oh wow oh cool <laughs> um so so and they came completely wild um and um but the thing is is that it's so funny how life unfolds or works out because they have really become a big family like you feel this unison they they all live together outside um they we don't stable them in winter we leave the we, I've got a, an old barn and we leave the barn open if they want to go in yeah um but we kind of live by the theory that they're naturally outside animals yeah. and yeah. they're much happier anyway yeah. so mine, mine are the same they live the same yeah 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 so they've just in they've just become this really nice unit I mean you watch the hierarchies there's definitely you know the lead mare and there's definitely the other that bosses the other one around and so there's all these different relationships going on out there but at the end of the day they're just like this lovely beautiful unit and uh, we're really lucky where we live um which is you know my family's um sort of uh, farm it's, it goes back a little way and um we have pasture here we've got a, we've got about 20 25 acres that we can we can move them around on so we've got various different um areas that through the year we just circulate them um so it's just worked out really well yeah it sounds idyllic I think um I mean my horses live out as well and it's a much they seem much more content it's a much more sort of natural routine for them isn't it and they can move and graze and and sleep and relax and they stand guard over each other and you know they're itchy they they've got a pal to itch on and yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it's um it's amazing well it's it so you've you've started running courses there haven't you with um equine guided education is that is yeah, that equine, yeah. equine guided education I went off in the uh, beginning of this year and I did a course with a lady that um, I had come across about four years ago when I started exploring um, equine therapy. And um, and so I chose to go and do her first level certification course um, back in April. And um, yeah, so that was a really beautiful time uh, with a, a group of um, about 16 of us. 
and it was pretty it it was a 10 day course but it it expanded over three weeks and it was pretty okay. intense every every single day 10 days actually it was 13 days um in total but and um yeah so i i had i had always as i said before i had always felt that with the understanding of the pr principles which i coach with i wanted to somehow incorporate this so i went to do the course to see what elements of the horsemanship side i could bring into it yeah um and so that was a really lovely experience and, and the lady out there um uh, is really great at sort of looking at nature yeah. and working with nature and seeing how nature speaks to us in the moment um you know as as if somebody was sharing something in the circle and it was something about um a conviction and something that she wanted to do a change she wanted to make and she said it in that moment a rooster would come running through the middle of them and suddenly <laughs> and it was like she noticed that as yeah look how how one it all is yeah. um so you know um that might be too woo woo for some people but i just i it's I all right you're learned. in the right place to share woo woo <laughs> if people aren't just, woo woo then they shouldn't be listening, shouldn't be listening. <laughs> <laughs> but that is that is what i i love those aspects because yeah. i think there's definitely there is this connection that when you start opening your eyes to it it's around us happening all the time yeah and that that goes as simply as showing it amongst being in the herd you know yeah um I think and... we I think when we're children and probably like you felt this when you were growing up or part of your childhood that you spent on the farm I think we're much more aware of these things and we're quite accepting of them as, as being part of that's just the way it is and then I think as we get older we we're, we're sort of taught to doubt it we're told that you know you're just imagining it or you know it's you know it's just a coincidence that's another lovely saying isn't it? yeah 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 coincidences <laughs> yeah. it was all coincidences it was all lovely ideas yeah um and then for me and sort of like my upbringing and my um sort of cultural um uh, sort of surroundings was always got to be practical that's all really nice stuff but at the end of the day every day you've got to be practical yeah um whereas and and I spent a lot of my life trying to be that but now I think there's more um for me I want to as much as I can and it's not always easy to do I want to listen to what the moment is saying yeah what you know it's it, it what life is showing me in the moment and if sometimes it means to do something that feels completely not what looks good on paper but somehow yeah. speaks to me and is the right is is potentially the right thing or you never know yeah. but it's going with that and it's trusting that there's something guiding you yeah I it's think within that's, you and that's sort of it's a, a big step for a lot of us to take isn't it I think and there's so much in society in our lives that bombards us and is noisy and you know so when we analyze things like you do you know you like you said on paper you're like well what you know what are the pros and cons and and but it's actually having that opportunity to I don't know get be in your heart or you know your intuition or your gut or <laughs> whatever yeah. it is to you but that sort of little niggling guidance isn't it that says hang on a minute it might not look like this is the step to take but you know trust me on this we it might not look like that's the quickest way from a to b but perhaps it is um yeah I yeah. love that it's, it's listening to the heart I think the heart you know they say um you know the heart is actually I'm, I'm gonna mess this up but they they say the heart is uh, one of our major brains like yeah. it, is, it is such an information piece and it's so there's something it's an organ that's very much almost more important than what our intellectual thought system is saying because our thinking yeah. is very important yeah. but there's a there are two sides of the thinking there's a thinking with all the things that tell you no not a good idea no you shouldn't be doing that or you know all this kind of stuff or you're not good enough for that or only other people do that or you know there's a knowing that if we can learn to just get back in touch with it's lovely to know that it's there yeah it's 
it's really powerful isn't it and I think so often over overlooked by people that this this inner wisdom and and even like you said the wisdom of the world around us like you know these these coincidences <laughs> the yeah. rooster you know that come to just give you a little sort of affirmation yeah that that that's the right way <laughs> like we're just cheering you on here um yeah yeah but that I mean it is it's very interesting I've it's something that I always mean to look into more but I haven't yet had the opportunity but the heart mm. is huge and I think that's um there's some interesting research being done by I think it's the Heart Math Institute. Heart Math in- yeah. Institute. Yep. And um and particularly around horses as well. And yep. the the uh, sort of resonance field around your heart and how that impacts the environment around you and heart coherence. And it's fascinating because the horse's heart has this huge um sort of sphere of Vibration. influence. Yeah, mm-hmm. compared to a human I can't I can't remember it's but it's quite a long way isn't it it's like is it two meters or yeah or yeah, yeah 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 it's like two three meters yeah yeah and um and I always think that's part of um you know part of what you feel when you're with the horses as well because they have this ability to create this heart coherence so that you begin to resonate on on their level and mm-hmm. with their vibration mm-hmm. and um I always think of like when you see a startled horse, how it sort of moves silently the the message through the herd. But obviously, you've got the other flip side of that, the sort of relaxing, the more sort of content, the slowing down. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can go in, you know, you can go in anxious being with a horse simply because for you, it's a big animal, and you don't know if you feel safe. So that anxiety follows with you. Um, but if you if if you're with somebody and you just teach them to one take their time because you've got to be congruent with you can't just force yourself to go up to the horse because I should be brave and do it. Yeah. But if you if you take your time, but you also also get in tune with your breathing, the horse is gonna you know you're getting in tune with the horse breathing as well. And a lot of us don't know that that is um, a possibility to just kind of bring yourself back to the moment and connect with whatever, whether it be a horse um, or whether it be just connecting with yourself, slowing down the mind. Um, But the horse is a wonderful facilitator to help you experience that. Yeah, I think I think you know, like we were talking a little bit earlier about the the sort of the cues and the signs from nature, and I think maybe it's because of the size of the horse as well. Like they give us those cues and signs, and you know they're harder to miss, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. And um, so it's sort of you know on our sort of deaf ears, <laughs> they they um, yeah. you know they like they get the sort of megaphone out and they're like, hello, <laughs> you you need to look yeah. at this um yeah yeah which is quite I think part of the power of them isn't it for sure is there um a particular you're sort of are you working mostly with women or is that that's just sort of how it started initially or um I am working mostly with women um it it just is um I think partly it's because I'm working with people like me I suppose not saying that you know we're all human beings at the end of the day but um you know I I feel like I have more to share with women. Later on down the line, I would love to open up to doing, you know, uh, mixed groups and stuff. But in general, yeah, it's working with women who, you know, are potentially going through transition in life, um, finding things a little challenging, difficult, uh, which brings up, you know, um, our daily anxieties. And, you know, we, we live in such an easily stressful world um and it's just it's it's helping it's helping others to to sort through the noise in the head I guess uh to have a a place to to be reminded what it feels like to slow down yeah um and hopefully take that reminder away with them um Ultimately, my desire is to help people, you know, recognize 
their own never-ending innate wisdom and, and, and health and the fact that even when life throws us challenging times, we're ultimately, we're going to be okay. And I know there's levels of okayness um, and some, you know, some are extreme, um, but even then to be able to provide a place where we can just be loving and compassionate and recognize what is forever flowing around us in all moments, like nature does not, does not stop just because it's stress, it listens, it slows down. Yeah. It takes a break. It waits for the next thing to guide it. And as humans, we forget to do that. Um, yeah. And so it's just, it, it's providing a place that um, women can come and, you know, move on to that next place they want to move on to or make that change that they want to make or understand something about themselves that they don't understand. And ultimately, realize that there's nothing to fix you're all really good <laughs> yeah that, I think that's a very powerful message um because a lot of people feel broken don't they and you know they they think that they are broken and that they need fixing and it's yeah and that that has a huge impact on on yeah. every aspect of of life doesn't it um yeah 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 and you know what I mean I was I'm was 100% that I I felt like I just needed to fix myself and if I could just fix this I would be this person that I have this image that I want to be right um and I don't know if those thoughts ever fully go away but what is an amazing gift and a piece of knowledge to know that all of that is me making that up and even so just to know that I'm the one making that up about myself yeah is 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 super helpful because you get to return back to back to your pure core of who you are and then you'll go into life and you'll get lost again but then you know there's a yeah. knowing and so you're able to come back again yeah I think that's the powerful thing isn't it is it's once you've had that experience it is a place that you can go back to like you know you're not going to necessarily be able to inhabit it all of the time because life happens yeah. <laughs> and you know that's perhaps not even the the purpose of life either is it to to always be in that that sacred place but you know once you you've had it it's somewhere that you can go back to and you can build on and and it becomes stronger but it's a process and a journey isn't it it's not yeah um, an expectation of perfection <laughs> yeah uh, yeah yeah and I and you know I am a believer that that's kind of what we're here for and the whole, being a human being is complicated and we're designed that way because we are designed to come here and have our lessons and you know we will we will have some major insights that you know suddenly we think damn it I've nailed it thank god <laughs> And then one month later, you're like, hang on a second. I thought I understood this all. <laughs> but, you know, that is, that's, that's us living life. That's yeah. what living life is about. And if you can sometimes, um, it's easier when you're out of it, but if you can sometimes recognize it for that, and then the wisdom that you gain from that, and then what you have to share for other, to other people, because we're all here to teach, to share, to, to give to receive yeah. like it's all part of the thing it's not about one person mastering it and the other one not yeah no it's it, we're all in this together aren't we and I think yeah um, sometimes well I think I think perhaps the last few years have been quite hard people have obviously with sort of lockdowns and things became very isolated I mean we mm. I think in our hectic culture we were quite isolated already like there's probably more sort of supposed communication than ever before but at the same time it's quite superficial communication rather than yeah. really a heartfelt community conversation yeah. Yeah. um you know it's all sort of like you know five second memes <laughs> and things exactly. online isn't it yeah um and it it is hard for people I think and there's there's a lot to work through and I think our times are challenging aren't they we are being called you talked about people going through transitions and 
it's like we face transitions all the time and they come at mm-hmm. us very quickly compared to perhaps previous generations and some of our ancestors would have you know had a a little bit of a more settled <laughs> settled experience you know things didn't change quite as rapidly as they do now we didn't have so many choices yeah we have so many choices and even though today we're taught that we should do this and we should live life this way that that's that's the teaching that kind of we've always given our children and our communities but what we've also introduced into the mix is that you can change at any time or you've, you've we've just got so many vices and different things that our brains go all over the place we're given messages that you need to be this but we're also being sent messages that um you can choose who you want to be and so our hearts are going all over the place it's like yeah. what do I listen to what do I um, trust yeah what do I trust yeah and and I love what you said about you know you know what um you know what COVID kind of brought to us and in many senses it was an isolation it was more attachment to technology um and 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 one of the things that has brought me to do what I want to do, especially I live very remotely, so I feel very isolated a lot of the time. And I I like community. I'm a, I'm a really quiet person and I'm a little bit of a loner, but I also like community. Um, and so I have this, you know, desire and this thing that I see in the world that we've kind of lost what it means to just pick up the phone. I'm and talk to somebody yeah you know it's all messages and this and it's all left up to interpretation but that almost human contact that holding somebody's hand that putting your arm around somebody's shoulder and just sitting down and having a talk about I don't know uh your favorite food (laughs) you know whatever just simple conversations is missing yeah and um I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's time to come back. It's time to, you know, pen pals when we used to write letters yeah, to people. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you did, didn't you? And I mean, I think that's, I mean, I've, I'm just 40. So I've kind of lived through, like, you've seen this, this huge change. Like you said, like, you know, when we were kids, it was like, you know, you wrote postcards and <laughs> yeah, you, know, you you had pen pals on the other side of the road yeah. of the world and you know there wasn't even email <laughs> exactly. you know you had the old rotary phone <laughs> where you yeah. dialed around yeah. and yeah. um and technology is you know don't get me wrong it's the amazing benefits like amazing I are here now and um, yeah connect with people all around the world but yeah, it's the bombardment, I think, in quite a short time of like the complete change. And I think we've it separated people in many ways. And then um, we're, we're finding a way. I think, like you said, COVID has been a sort of bit of a trigger point of people finding their way back to that more sort of connection, connected mm-hmm. conversation mm-hmm. And, and community. Um mm. And I think also with you and your horses, it's realizing that it's not just human connection and community, isn't it? It's there mm-hmm. is this whole sort of orchestra of of beings out there that we can connect with and yeah. and have as our community. So I mean, I I expect with six horses, like whilst you're isolated perhaps from people, you you do have a quite a strong community that that has your back there. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm very lucky. I at the moment we've got them, we've just moved them into their winter, what we we are now calling their winter pasture. And it's literally bang outside the back of the house. So in the mornings and in the evenings, I can I just walk outside and I'm like, hey girls, and and it's just it's lovely to have them there. Yeah. Um so it's it's very lucky. Um so yeah. Yeah, it's just being able to share that is 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 nice. Yeah, I think and I think probably part of what makes it so special is like you kind of got the double double whammy for people, haven't you? Because you've got the the horses and their energy and their wisdom, but you've also got the quiet and nature and yeah. you know, the environment and 
giving people a chance to breathe and you know, just yeah. yeah and remember breathe and remember because you know people we are and and it's not you don't even have to be in a troubled place but just to be able to we, you know again we walk around so busy in our days um and so it's very uh, easy to to be reactionary to stuff daily but when you do get reconnected to yourself there's an amazing shift that sort of happens happens both in the body and in the mind and you walk differently you yeah. communicate differently and you see other things around you differently you, I think you're just generally a bit softer it gives you a chance to be softer yeah um and you know all of that's good stuff for us we need yeah. it in the world yeah I think I mean, that's what I feel is I think um, anywhere that there's there's people like you that are helping other people to find a bit more peace in themselves. I think there's people who care about the natural world, I think, are, are quite bombarded with a lot of negativity, overwhelm, anxiety, and also a feeling of hopelessness and helplessness. Um, what can they do? And mm -hmm. I think things that that we've talked about and you shared about actually just finding the opportunity to listen to yourself and not reliant on other people telling you what to do but to use your own wisdom and knowledge and mm -hmm. to tap into nature and the wisdom and knowledge that's there and the cues mm -hmm. that it is a you know there are reasons for hope <laughs> I think that's definitely that's, yeah and hope's such an important thing if you do lose hope life does become a little closed and a little a little more difficult um and so just to get that glimmer spark of hope again is so powerful and it's such a it can it can just it can it can give you some motivation to do something different that day make that you know to just see life a little bit differently to see yourself differently hope's really important and I think it was I can't remember if it was you that said um in your email to me that your podcast was you know kind of showing people that you know with all the negative perceptions there is about nature and the world today yeah. that it's still here and it's still thriving yeah. and just to be able to promote that and I think you know, so many people do just daily get so upset with what's happening to the planet and it's understandable, but there is hope. It's right here. It's happening yeah. around us all the time. Even if you go to, for a walk in your local park, it's there. Yeah. Um, so to at least see that and know that there's a concern that we have to put our minds to, but at least to know that. Yeah. Yes, to give yeah it is it's about the energy and intent and I think that comes back to the what we were saying about the horses like it's it's not about sort of denying that you're concerned or you know like if you've you've not experienced with horses and you walk into the field with them like they will react to you if you acknowledge that you're scared like if you walk in and you're like hey look I'm actually a bit scared to be here you I'm a little bit intimidated they're yeah. like well like we've got all the time in the world for you and and don't you worry you know we'll, we'll look after you but if you come in and you're like I'm absolutely fine I've you know I'm really happy to be here and they're like inside you're quaking they they have a, a different <laughs> different reaction to you they're like why are you hiding and I think that's to me it's about intention there isn't it and and just connecting to that and I think yeah. when we feel helpless and hopeless about the natural world the intention and the vibration that we're putting out there is is not positive we're not going to see what we want to see because we're focusing mm -hmm. on the dark the negative mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I think and then you don't you sort of re it becomes reinforcing doesn't it if you sure. then see more and more of the negative but actually there are positive stories out there and like you said even even if they're little things it's I mean the resilience of nature is huge and you know it just needs a little crack and it can <laughs> and do incredible things um yeah. I mean we've got a, a little patio outside our kitchen window and I had this lovely um uh, I think it was a great willow herb which is a, a wild um flower 
and it grew up in this like tiny little crack between the patio slabs and ended up like four foot tall and it was just just, like how did that happen amazing display (laughs) of of beautiful pink blooms outside my kitchen window like you know it's it's sown itself there and and yeah it is that's just to me that was just a beautiful sort of symbol of actually you know it didn't it didn't need this lovely wildflower meadow it was like I'm quite happy here on this little little patio crack I I can manage Yeah. yeah yeah that's a great example yeah well I think I think we're sort of getting to the point where it's probably we could uh could wrap up Holly but um oh it's been a it's been lovely talking to you yeah um it's been a it's been a lovely conversation yeah and um I will put the link to your your website in the the notes uh, for the the podcast so that if anyone's interested they can get in touch with you um and you're do you want to just um, say whereabouts you're based? And um... yeah, I'm based um, in in Gloucestershire. In my nearest town is Cheltenham. Okay. So, and um, I'm literally, you know, 15 minute drive to the centre of town. But the moment you get up here, it's like a bubble of where am I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. That's a beautiful part of the country. A lovely yeah, it's place lovely. to be. It's lovely. Yeah, and um, I would hopefully encourage people to to get in touch with you, but, and especially if uh, they haven't got horses in their life at the moment, then um, it's oh yeah, an amazing, I'm not <laughs> amazing gift. Out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you so much, Holly. It's been an absolutely lovely conversation with you. I've really enjoyed meandering around and talking yeah, about lots thank of you, things. Yeah, thanks so much. It's been lovely. Thank you so much for listening to the Nurtured by Nature podcast. I truly hope this conversation has brought some hope and inspiration into your life. I would love to have these messages ripple out across the world. So if you can, please share this episode with your friends, leave a review on your favourite podcast player and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. I would love to hear from you, so please feel free to connect with me on the links provided in the podcast description. But most importantly, thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. But don't forget to simply get out there and enjoy the natural world.